This conference will now be recorded. Good Monday afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, this week's episode of Moving Markets with Jeffrey Dunyon and Kevin Hurley. Uh, I am Jeffrey Dunyon, owner and founder of Safe Option Strategies. Uh, I am flying solo today. Kevin Hurley is is not with me today, had some other obligations going on. So, you know, Kevin might have to listen to to the recording of this podcast and and come back and uh, I don't know maybe correct the record on on some things I say is I feel like this is my opportunity to uh, really say anything I want about Kevin uh, how wrong he is on every I'm, I'm just kidding um, Kevin and I have been working together known each other for a really long time and uh, and he's fantastic to to work with and uh, I'm not gonna say anything to throw him under the bus too much let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what happened today this will probably be kind of a short podcast because if I don't have things to bounce off of Kevin or don't have an opportunity to argue with him um, yeah just maybe not be as much to talk about but uh, today was interesting day in the market from from the perspective that I, I don't know that the the market ever caught fire in any direction until the very end of the day even with as little as a, an hour left in trading today uh, the markets were still really, really flat. And then just maybe in that last um, hour, to, you know, 45 minutes to maybe an hour, it kind of caught some momentum and, and had a little shift and moved to the upside. And, you know, Dow finished up 100 points today. NASDAQ finished up uh, 34. S&P finished up 13. You, you can see right here that in all three of those major indexes, you're somewhere between a quarter and a third of a percent. Uh, the S&P almost exactly a third of a percent, the, the Dow and the NASDAQ a little over a quarter percent, not quite a third of a percent. Uh, relatively speaking, that's a that's a, a flat day in the market for all intents and purposes. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, from a technical standpoint, it really does feel like the markets have kind of peaked you know, S and P right in here in this in this forty one fifty. I did hear one analyst today uh, who's still a little bit bullish on the S and P, saying that forty two hundred is the mark he thinks it will hit before it it backs down again. Um, I don't I don't have a strong opinion right now on whether there's a little bit of steam left in this rally that could push it up, or whether right at about this technical level of resistance, if we're more poised to to go down, what's going to be the tell? Uh, and and you know really dictate what this market does over the next few weeks is going to be the um, the earnings reports that come out this week and next. Now it, it, what's what's interesting is you've got we've been looking at um, the Fed and what the Fed is going to do and what the Fed is going to you know are they going to raise rates or are they not going to raise rates? How big a percentage increase is it going to be? Uh, are they going to pause? Are they going to reverse and reduce rates? Uh, that, that's been all the focus. We've been looking at CPI and PPI data. We've been looking at PCE data. We've been looking at these different economic reports that give us a gauge on what inflation is like. Is it continuing to go up? Is it easing? Um, is, is it backing off fast enough or slowing down fast enough? Um, it, it's That's been all the focus. Now we're going to get into the real heart of earnings this week and next. You've got Tomorrow, you've got Netflix reporting on Wednesday. I think before the end of the week, you've got, I think Goldman Sachs, I think comes in there um, tomorrow. I believe you've got um, some other big names that are reporting uh, this week towards the latter part of the week. I, I want to, I, I might be forgetting right now, but I want to say um, Delta Airlines or United, I think it's United actually. One of the two big airlines is reporting later this week. Uh, AT&T reports. Uh, Blackstone reports. Uh, I mean, you've you've got a lot of big companies that are reporting this week, and then next week we really get into the uh, beginning of the technology companies. Next week and the week after is when you get into the big United, uh, the big excuse me, the big technology companies. Um, I think next week, either on Wednesday or Thursday, uh, is when. I want to say Amazon reports on one of those days. Sorry, I don't have it all memorized right now. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm taking a peek on a different screen here that's taking a really long time to refresh. But I think you've got uh, Amazon at, towards the end of next week. 
Um, you've got Boeing and Caterpillar reporting next week. Uh, American Airlines uh, reports um, at the end of next week. Uh, maybe it was Delta that reported last week and then American Airlines reports um, next week. Uh, you've got some energy companies. Valero will report. Chevron will report. Texaco will report. Uh, or Chevron, Texaco, Exxon Mobil will report. And then on, on that week of um, May 1st through May 5th, you've got uh, some of the big technology companies are going to be reporting that week. I think you're going to have Apple. I think you're going to have Amazon. I think you're going to have Google. Uh, I think Facebook reports that week. Uh, and what's what's a little bit different, a little bit interesting is while these different big companies' earnings reports can push things around and move things in one direction or the other, right when we get into the heart of that week where the technology companies are reporting, you're going to have the, the next Fed announcement on a rate hike. That's going to come up on May 3rd. The next time the Fed is meeting is May 2nd or 3rd. That's just a couple weeks away. And there's there's kind of a split um kind of a split in the opinions right now on whether or not the fed will do another 25 basis point rate hike or whether they'll pause this time uh, kevin and i talked the uh, last two weeks that we did this podcast we talked about the danger of either one you you get a 25 basis point hike people are going to be upset about that they're going to think that the fed's being too aggressive they're never going to back off uh, you, you, you know, more rate increases, um, while they might tame inflation a little bit, they, they are also increasing the probability of a recession and maybe a longer and deeper recession. If they pause, you you run the risk on a pause that people interpret that as the, the bank situation that a lot of analysts are saying is not completely over even non-analysts, but smart financial minds like Warren Buffett are saying there's going to be more pain. Jamie Dimon is saying there's going to be more pain that comes from, from this bank issue and this liquidity issue. Uh, so a pause right now could be seen as, as something that um, makes the bank situation look worse than, than maybe the spin has tried to suggest. So it, I said this last time before the Fed met that they're kind of in a no-win situation, uh, but they they did an okay job of threading the needle a little bit. I'm not sure they're going to be able to thread it again this time. I, I was wrong last time. Maybe I'll be wrong again this time, but we'll see what happens. The The Fed is, is in a little bit of a precarious situation because um, almost anything that they do or don't do could be perceived as the wrong thing for for a variety of different reasons so it's going to be it's going to be a fascinating week i'm excited about earnings reports i always get excited about earnings i think a lot of companies are going to come in with earnings beats the reason i think that is because analysts are really good at manipulating expectations and and creating a situation where earnings always look good uh, they they always look like they like companies did not not always oftentimes they they look like they did better than they were supposed to do, but that's because of the expectations being lowered. What's really going to determine how things move over these next couple of weeks is going to be the um, guidance that companies give. Uh, most companies, when they give an earnings report, they tell you what their expectation is for the next quarter, sometimes the next couple of quarters, sometimes the next calendar year. And before they ever give their guidance, you've got Wall Street analysts and, and you know professional uh, analysts who are going to give their opinion on what they think the companies should do over the next couple of quarters in the next year. And then the question is, how much do those things line up with each other? If, if Tesla reports tomorrow and whether they whether they beat or whether they miss their earnings expectation for the previous quarter, when they give their guidance, when they tell their investors, here's how much we think we're going to make next quarter. Here's how many cars we think we're going to deliver next quarter. Here's what we think the, the average uh, revenue is going to be on these cars. Here's what we think our expenditures are going to be. When they give all that information, is it going to be in line with what analysts are expecting it to be? Is it going to be better than what analysts are expecting? Is it going to be worse than what analysts are expecting? The challenge for a lot of companies is if if they could, if they're overly aggressive on their own guidance, that's the type of thing that could really come back and bite them. Uh, you could you could tick off a lot of investors 
by saying, hey, we're, we're going to make a billion dollars next quarter, and then you make a half a billion dollars. Uh, they don't want to say, hey, we're only going to make a half a billion, and analysts are expecting us to make 700 billion. Uh, you know, they are, or, I'm sorry, we, we're going to make half a billion. Uh, analysts are expecting us to make 700 million. I got to make sure I get the right number of zeros on there. You, you don't want to come in so far below what analysts are expecting that you tank your stock, that you see a big sell off in the stock because you, you came up way short of those expectations. So, but in the current economic climate, it's going to be tough for them to guide very positive. So I, you could see a number of companies meet their, meet their earnings in terms of what they were expected to do for the previous quarter, but not give a real strong guidance statement or not, not give a real strong um, projection or expectation for the following quarter. And that's, to me, that's going to be the tell of, of what we're in for, for the rest of this calendar year. I am firmly on the, I am firmly in the camp of thinking before this year is over, we hit recession that we're going to see that either second quarter or third quarter contracts that the following quarter contracts as well. And I think when we do go into recession, it's going to last a little bit longer and be a little bit deeper than what a lot of people think it's going to be. Uh, I base that primarily on the fact that policies are not changing that will positively affect the markets and positively affect the economy. If we had policy changes going on that, that were good for the economy, then I, I would say maybe there could be a soft landing. Maybe the Fed could navigate us into less of a recession or no recession or a very shallow recession. But you've got to have meaningful policy change that takes place in order to create the environment where that's even possible. So I just not I'm just not looking for um, anything real positive to to come out in the way of guidance and what these companies are saying about the future. So we'll see what happens. Um, Again, I know it's a short podcast. I know uh, you know it's it's a little bit harder to to spend a lot of time. When I when I don't have my uh, co-host here, we'll have Kevin back next week. But um, for now, I'm going to wrap up right there. Uh, as far as new trades, I'm going to wait and see what companies report, then get into trades on those companies rather than try and and outguess what the market is going to do. So uh, next week, I'll probably have some some trades to talk about and and run them by Kevin and see what he thinks. And so uh, for those of you that can join us next week on our podcast, in the meantime, have a great week.